you are successfully diversifying your portfolio? Well, by the end of this video, we'll explain why just focusing on risk diversification and not considering your tax diversification could leave you caught off guard when you finally get to those golden years. Welcome back to Navigate Your Wealth. My name is Samantha Irish. And I'm Karen Stewicki. For the best advice on how to use both life insurance and annuities to create a successful retirement, subscribe to our channel and hit the notifications bell to be notified when we upload new videos. <laughs> Okay, diversification. By definition, diversification is a risk management strategy that mixes a wide variety of investments within a portfolio. You've probably heard the expression, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Because by spreading your investments into a variety of asset types, you're limiting exposure to any single asset class or risk. So why is that important? By allocating investments among various financial instruments, it minimizes the risk should one vehicle or solution be negatively affected. Potentially, another area wouldn't be hit. We know that there are investments that can be impacted positively mm -hmm. or negatively based on stock market volatility, and others that could be impacted based on interest rate movement. Right. And there are still other investments that actually have no correlation to the market at all. At Compass Financial, we use a model called the GPS, which illustrates a client's diversification. As you can see from this picture, the model is divided into four quadrants. The two quadrants above the line are what we call paper assets. These would be assets that change in value on a regular basis, things like stocks, bonds, real estate. Now, investments that do not lock in the gain or loss until they're sold are in that category. To give you another idea of what I'm talking about, think about your 401k statement or any other investment statement that you might receive in the mail. When it finally receives in the mail and you open the envelope, the value on that page is probably wrong. Mm -hmm. You see, it wasn't wrong the day it was printed, but hopefully in the week that it took to get to your mailbox, the value's gone up. Right. Now, of course, the value could also have gone down. This is why we call this a paper asset. The value is just a number on a page and is ever changing. Now, below the line, these two quadrants are what we call real wealth. Things like checking, savings, certificates of deposits, and other bank accounts, as well as cash value life insurance, would be listed here. We call them real wealth because the value cannot go backwards. Mm -hmm. I know banks don't pay much these days, but one thing is for sure. If you take your deposit to a bank today and come back in a month, it's still there. When advisors are working with clients to find the perfect risk tolerance, they'll ask you questions like, when do you need the money? Or how would you feel if your portfolio went down 30% mm. to determine how to allocate your investments? Perhaps you've heard 80-20, 70-30, 60-40 portfolios. The first number refers to the percentage that we would put in the paper assets, stocks, other assets that fluctuate in value, or as we refer to them, above the line. Right. The second number would be the percentage that would be in real wealth and have little to no fluctuation. We like to call it below the line asset. We know that paper assets, while they do have most growth potential, they also take on more risk. Whereas your real wealth, that has the least growth potential, but also the least risk. So if we ask you, where would you like your money to be? Most people, of course, are going to say above, above the line. The line. <laughs> but the Wall Street rule of thumb says age below the line. Meaning, if you're an 80-year-old, you should probably have a 20-80 portfolio. See, the bulk of your wealth should probably be taking very little mm -hmm. to no risk. But you're not dead, so you still want to have 20% above the line, hopefully keeping pace with inflation. Now, of course, if you're 25 years old, your portfolio would be 75-25. Mm -hmm. It's not a hard, fast rule. It's just a rule of thumb. And each person, of course, is very different and should be considered individually. But again, how old are you? What's your risk tolerance? And how many years until you may retire are just a few of the questions that really should be asked and answered. Leave a comment in the section below and let us know if you've considered these questions when you are diversifying your portfolio. 
And then after this video, check out the video we created, The Power of Three, to better understand why diversification might not only refer to market risk. The link is in the description below. And speaking of tax-free income, uh -huh. when we look at tax diversification in our GPS model, we've been talking about vertical diversification, which I explained is diversifying between the risk classifications mm -hmm. or the assets. I also pointed out that our model is divided into four quadrants. We talked about above the line and below the line, but now let's look at the left side and the right side. On the left side, this is where we place all the assets that are tax deferred. We discuss this in other videos, but things that would be in that category would be things like your IRA, 401k, mm -hmm. 401a, 403b, deferred comp, profit sharing plan, mm -hmm. any other plan like that that gives you the tax benefit when you made the contribution. Mm -hmm. You deduct that contribution from your current earnings and that reduces your tax for that year. Mm -hmm. The money and all of the growth will not be reported until such time as you take the money out. Okay. That's what they mean by tax deferred. But then when you take the money out, it is taxed at whatever the rate you're in, in the year you pull it out. That's the way it works. All right. On the right side are all the other assets and investments. These would have no current tax benefit for making the investment, and taxes going forward would be specific to the investment. For example, mm -hmm. bank accounts, mutual funds, they're going to send you a 1099 each year for any interest, dividends, or capital gains that you earned or paid. Other things, like individual stocks, real estate investments, would have no particular reporting or taxes due until such time as you actually made the sale. Okay. And then, depending on the length of time it was held, that tax is either going to be long-term or short-term <laughs> capital gains. All right. But this is also where you would find your Roth IRAs, tax-free municipal bonds, and cash value life insurance, all of which are tax-free. Now, unfortunately, with municipal bonds, while they are tax-free, they are subject to reporting <laughs> when determining your Social Security will be taxed. Darn that government. I know. They want theirs. <laughs> but with all three, there will be no tax due ever on the gains when you remove them from the account. Now, keep in mind, there are rules that do need to be followed with the Roth IRA, okay. but if you check all the boxes, the income will be tax-free. Okay, <laughs> so now we've looked at what falls on the left and the right side of the model. I'll ask you this question. Do you want to pay your taxes now or kick the can down the road and pay them later? I'm pretty sure most people would say later. later. <laughs> Why would I want to pay anything, especially taxes, sooner than I need to, right? Well, last week we aired our show titled, Two Bags of Money Could Mean 23% More Income in Retirement. Did you watch it? See, this is the key. Just like the saying, don't put all of your eggs in one basket, when it applies to risk, taxes are a risk, mm -hmm. and that question applies here too. Do you want to pay on the seed or do you want to pay on the harvest? I think the seed is smaller. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this model again. If you pay on the seed, you are investing on the right side, buying with money that's already been taxed and won't ever be taxed again. I like that. On the left, you're getting your tax deduction today, and I know it feels good, but it won't feel good later when the account is significantly bigger and taxes potentially have gone up. Did you ever consider the deduction you got on your taxes because of your 401k contribution is a loan from the IRS? Listen, <laughs> your due date is coming. <laughs> okay, let's wrap this up with a good story. <laughs> All right. All right. In previous videos, we've stressed the point that it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Well, here's a story of two friends and how their diversification impacted their retirement. Ten years ago, we had a client come to us. Mm -hmm. We're going to call them Client A. And that said, he was looking to retire in a few years and said he had done a good job of saving but had never really asked for professional help, so he just wanted a second set of eyes. Well, it turns out he didn't give himself quite enough credit. He had actually done a great job of saving. But... 
like most Americans, had diversified his risk and made great returns over the working years, but had only focused on the immediate gratification by contributing the max to his 401k and IRAs. He was so <laughs> proud of his returns and his tax savings over the 30 years. Mm, then we reminded him that while his assets were a big number, it wasn't all his. I know. I know. <laughs> Remember, those accounts are still taxable, and a percentage was still due to the IRS. It's a joint account. I'm sorry. We had made some recommendations for how to strategically convert a portion of his assets to tax-free. Right. And while he really appreciated our help, he just couldn't see the value and ultimately decided it wasn't for him. It happens sometimes. But because of our good working relationship, we were able to help him with some other aspects of his finances. And like most clients, he was excited to share us as a resource to his friend and coworker. So let's refer to the friend as Client B. While Client B didn't have quite as much save for retirement, he was open to strategic conversions to take a portion of his assets and diversify the tax. It took him about five years, mm -hmm. but when he was done, he was so mm -hmm. excited to see how little he ultimately paid in tax over his lifetime. It is here in the lifetime tax and the more spendable income right. that this story has power. See, client A had more money when we first met, right. but he didn't focus on tax diversification. And while client B initially had less, but with a 10-year focus on risk diversification and tax diversification, by the time they both retired, client B had more spendable income. And that is important. If you'd like to see what your GPS can look like and how well you are diversified, click on the link below and apply to become our client. And also, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and as always, share it with a friend. Thanks again for watching, and remember, if what you thought to be true turned out not to be, when, when would you, you want to know it? it?